All right, now we're gonna put everything together. We're gonna to use both ref and reactive to create a component that uses the state of the component and the value of ref to conditionally render something to the screen. So we're gonna have an input right here, and this input is gonna be connected to this user input variable. So we're gonna be able to enter information into this input, and based off that information, it will change what's in user input, because it's a ref and it's reactive, and based off that information, the component is going to have a state. It's going to have a success state, a failure state, an in-progress state, and that those states right there are going to decide what kind of error statements we're going to print to the screen based off the user's input. And we're going to use this button right here to then ask for a method, the submit form method, to then decide whether we're going to return success, failure, or in progress. And that right there will decide what is the state of this component. So let's go ahead and add input. And this input is going to use another directive from view called vModel. And in vModel, we're going to connect it directly to the user input variable. And just so we understand exactly what's going on here, we'll first import ref. And we're going to get that from view. And then we'll go ahead and create the user input variable. And we'll call it a let because it's going to be changed. And this user input variable we wrapped in this ref variable, and it'll be an empty string. So whatever we type into this user input, whatever is going to be in there, it's going to change what the user input is. And then we can go ahead and start creating the other parts of this application. We're gonna have a button that we wanna to connect to a method. What this is gonna do is we're gonna call it submit form. And that's going to call our submit form method right here. But we're not gonna create that yet. We're going to go ahead and create the reactive component state because we want to know what the state of the, of the component is. And so we're gonna get reactive. And we're going to create the reactive component state. We're going to call it component state is equal to reactive. And we have our reactive object. And we're going to define three, st three states. It's going to have in progress state, which as when the component starts and it gets mounted, which will be true because we're in progress. And we're going to have an error status. And that's false because there's no error yet. And then we're going to have a success status, which is false because there's no success yet. And then we're going to have some error statements that will then show based off whatever the component state is. So we're going to create three P tags. And in these P tags, we're going to say, please fill out form. It's saying this one needs to be longer than two characters. Because basically what we're saying here is, if the user puts in some information and it's not longer than two characters, then we want to show this because that's a failure state that we are going to set. And then we're going to say success. So if the user enters in something like Brian, it's longer than two characters, we're going to consider that a success. So when they press this button, it will show success. Right now it shows all of them because we don't have any logic that's saying what should happen or not happen. Let's go ahead, create that VF logic. We're going to say v if component state. Remember, to, uh, we have to access the property of that state. So we're going to say in progress. So if, if this component state is in progress, right? So if this is true, then go ahead and print out fill out form. I'm going to copy this, paste it to all of these. And you see that still all of them exist. We're going to change these. So we want to have the failure state. So component state dot error will be the failure status. It's not the failure status, so we don't see that anymore. We don't see it needs to be longer than two characters anymore. And then we have success. And that doesn't show anymore as well. All right, now what we want to do is we want to create the method. So when we click this button, we can submit the form. But first, what we're going to do is verify whether this V model is working, right? So this V model user input is supposed to be connected to here, this user input. And they're supposed to be whatever is in here is supposed to equal whatever is in here, right? And just to double check, we're gonna create this method, function submit form, 
and we're going to console.log user input dot value because we have to use a dot value syntax whenever we use a ref. And so whenever we click this button, it's going to call submit form, but we first got to go ahead and get that event handler connected. Submit form. All right, let's go ahead, refresh, and go ahead and test this out. Nothing, because there's nothing in here. Let's go ahead and put three A's. Oh, we see three A's. Type my name, Brian. We see Brian. So whatever this V model says, user input is now connected to this variable, this ref variable called user input. So we now have access to that information. So we can use whatever information we get from user input to then kind of decide, okay, what do we want the component state to be using the submit form right here? And so we're gonna make an if else statement. We're, we're gonna make an if else statement to define three conditions. The first condition is going to be user input dot value dot length greater than two. So if it's greater than two, that's our success condition. And we're gonna say whatever is put in the form is correct. And we're going to set the component state. In order to do this, we're going ahead, we're gonna go ahead and type out all the three component states. In progress, it's false, because it's not gonna be false. If it's greater than two, it's success. Component state dot error equals false, because if it's greater than two, it's a success, it's not an error. And then component state dot success is equal to true. All right, so if we go ahead and have longer than three, we have a success right here. And let's just make this a little bit better. I want to add a class right here. This is error, class error. So we just want to make errors red and success green. Class error and success, class success. And this will just be for our CSS. So we're gonna put our style tags right here. Scoped style tags and error. It's going to be the color red. And success is going to be color green. All right, so please fill out the form. Nothing happens because we haven't decided a failure state inside our method right here. But if we have our success state, we get the success and it's green. And so that looks a little bit better. Now that we've done that, we want to define our other three states. Else if, let's go ahead and copy this right here because it's gonna be based off length. User input value is less than or equal to two is a failure state for us. And we're gonna copy this. And in progress is false, but the error in this case is true and there's no success. So now we type in only two, it needs to be longer than two characters. And lastly, we can go ahead and copy paste this again. Anything else is happening, we just wanna make sure that we get the, pro the prompt from it being in progress. True. False. All right. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And it asks me to fill out the form. Nothing's happening. I click the button. It needs to be longer than two characters. We also want to define another thing. Let's just say we haven't had any input here yet. We're going to define one more case. And if the user input dot value dot length is greater than zero, we can also define a user error. But let's just say persons just hasn't filled out the form yet and they click this button, nothing happens, right? But if they put one letter, then it's an error, another letter, another error. But if it's longer, success state, nothing. Please fill out the form. And so basically, let's just go through this one more time just to kind of review what's going on in this application. We have the input here. And the input is connected to the user input, a ref variable. So whatever we type in here becomes the user input, and then we can just use that. And then we set the component state, and we have three states for this component, in progress, error, or success. We start out as in progress, and then we have some validation right here, some prompts for whatever is going on in our component. 
and we go into the submit form, which is called buyer button. And we say, hey, we want to know what the user input length is, the so user input dot value dot length. And we decide if it's greater than two, then we have a success state. If it's less than or equal to two, or it's greater than zero, then we have our error state Then every other thing that might happen or in our in progress state. And that is how this application works. Say as please fill out the form, nothing happens. Then we get our errors. Now we have our success. And that is just another way that you can use reactive. And we're also using ref to remember and figure out what the value of this input is to decide the state of this component, to decide what happens with all the error prompts that we are getting. All right, and that's the video for Ref and Reactive. Thank you for watching. If you want to see the code, I have it in GitHub. I will link to all the separate components, uh, linked to all those separate components in the description below. And you can also get the application from my GitHub and get the full application. You'll be able to access all the individual components themselves, click around, test them out, change things, and see how they work. Um, and as well, um, if you ever need some more information, go to the viewreference.com website. And I also have documentation there that you can use to, uh, to learn more about uh, Ref or Reactive. I have an article on it right here that shows you how to use both Ref and Reactive and as well, a little bit more of an in-depth article on reactivity and state that's in progress right now. Thank you for watching.